Hello viewers, today for the initial checkout we have a set of Uniden telephones. These are the infamous loud and clear or quiet and blurry cordless telephones. This is a DEC6 model with the Digitan answering system. I think we're going to have somewhat of a tape freak show here. Just way too much tape. I, I never understood the rationality behind using so much tape to hold bubble wrap together. Like, it's not going to come apart. If you wrap it up and then put it down, like, okay, let's say, imagine there's no tape. If you wrap this up like this, and then you put it there in a box, like, it's not going to come undone. You don't even need any tape. And yet, for some reason, very consistently, people use like half of the roll of tape or more on this. Stop! It's not necessary. Seriously, people? And now I can't even reuse this this material because it's so entangled in, in endless amounts of tape. Well, that wasn't too bad. Okay, here we have the telephones. This is the unit and model number. Oh my, that's tiny writing. Easy AI, whoops, jeez, oh, 2997. Oh, great, it's made in China. Ooh. There's the rest of the informations. It does take in the AC 7.8 volts, 450 milliamps, which is very odd. There were not very many unit and telephones that took AC in. I think that's stupid. I just, it's annoying because these are usually AC to DC and so if these go out or they get lost which is a common thing when you're buying second hand trying to find a replacement adapter is extremely difficult and I don't know what the advantage is to doing that AT&T back in the day did that pretty often I mean, it just seems to me like you'd have to put additional circuitry into the phone and that would just make it more complicated to build. Because the phone itself has got to run on dirt current. That's just intrinsically how electronics work. Okay. So we got the AC adapters opened up. 
these do not appear to have a whoops these do not appear to be the original batteries this is a BT1007 nickel metal hydride battery and I believe it would have originally shipped with the nickel cadmium battery probably the same battery that shipped in the Uniden uh, 1580 I don't know if these are still good or not I suppose I can charge them up and see oddly enough the handsets are made in Vietnam I'll put these back in here just to see if they take a charge or not. These phones were, at least up until a couple years ago, pretty highly sought after because they really work. Um, my grandfather doesn't hear as well as he used to and I recently got him a set of telephones like this and it really does work. Cradle takes in the 8 volts AC so we have the adapter for the base, which is the Uniden PS-0034, which outputs AC 7.8 volts at 450 milliamps. And then we have the adapter for the cradle, which has a microscopic font on it. And that is the model PS-0035 8 volts AC at 300 milliamps so let's go ahead and plug these in anyways what I was saying before is these telephones were pretty highly sought after as of at least a couple of years ago because there's not a whole lot of models with the amplified audio in more recent times Clarity, which I'm pretty sure operates uh, in a close connection with the VTEC because their phones seem to have the same operating systems. Clarity has started releasing a number of models that are semi reasonably priced. Panasonic has released some DEC 6 models, but the price is just absurd. And we're talking into the triple digits for a singular handset system. And I've worked with the phone before and it's just average. I, I don't know why in the world they can justify that price. I really have not been happy with Panasonic's uh, offerings. I don't really work with newer phones that much. But from what I have seen, I am not thrilled at all. I think uh, VTEC or AT&T, which of course are pretty much the same thing, is kind of the way to go now if you need a, a modern telephone set. So it looks like the one on the right, Paul's number two, has already picked up a charge. And it looks like Connie's phone has also picked up a charge. It's not to say it's going to last for any length of time, but it is there. The uh, base has a visual ringer switch on the back. That's off. We'll go ahead and switch it on if possible. There we go. And then uh, we have the ringer selection here. Answering machine settings. The base looks like it would have had some kind of a protective film over there for a long time. You can see the dirt line where it was. It's not in bad condition, it seems mostly just dirty. Okay, the charge went out real quick. Most likely those batteries are probably on their way out. I'll go ahead and replace them so that we can get through the video uh, because I don't I don't think that they're uh, really going to charge up that quick. I should have plugged this in earlier in the day. I don't know why. 
didn't do that. I've been home all day. I should have thought about it. I should have some ones that will work. Um, I know these are the wrong physical size, but they will uh, they'll work. Okay, that looks like it's working. These batteries are relatively new, so they should be they should be in the good working order. Okay, and this is kind of what I think would have come with it originally. Although this is a this is a 1015. I thought the 107 was just real small ones. That's a 1021. I don't know which one I'm thinking of then. I find that nickel cadmium batteries or nickel metal hydride batteries rather don't fare too well when they sit out of charge for a long time. Nickel cadmium seems to be okay, but nickel metal hydride not so much. So I'm just going to. Go ahead and toss those out. Look, I don't really play games with uh, weak batteries. There's no point. They're pretty cheap anyways. Okay. So, the phone set is on now. Let's get the testing equipment powered up. So I like these phones a lot. They're kind of hard to come by, but I like them because they're just easier to see and use. You know, the screen is is a much better size than well, I, I usually use the the unit in 1580, and so actually, you know what? The screen is not that much bigger. It's clearer though, because it looks like it's a dot matrix screen, so it is much clearer to look at. And the buttons are definitely bigger. I think the buttons are okay on this, but this is even easier to, to dial accurately. Although, I will say the one thing I don't like about this model is that they combine the talk buttons like on the old units. But that's like end, exit kind of. To me, this is just a little bit clearer to use. I find this slightly confusing. But anyways... Still a pretty good phone. The ergonomics are, are pretty comfortable. I like the bigger handset. And I think they have some... Oops. They have some uh, focal features on these as well. Let's take a look and see what we have here. Oh, that's another thing I didn't like about these. The way it navigates. You have to use the volume buttons on the side to go up and down. Okay, so I think now it should say the number when we dial it. Two, five, eight, zero, one, 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 seven, nine, six, three. It's not a very clear voice. Eight, eight. Nor is it very loud. The earpiece goes exceptionally loud, but unfortunately the speakerphone does not follow. The speaker phone is kind of average on these. Yeah, see that's confusing. I keep going there to turn it off. And I think if we scroll through the phone book, it reads the names as well. Brown. Carol. Con. Crow. Crow. Frank. Frank. Jamie, Santa, Taylor. Oh, delete everything in here. I 
It would be nice if it read all the menus and stuff in between. In a lot of ways, this set is kind of rudimentary as far as the accessibility features go. Oh, this is a lot more entries to it. See, there's also a lot of stuff in the caller ID, so I'll go ahead and delete that out. Actually, it's not a, not too much, but let's delete that before uh, before one of those numbers ends up on the video. And I'll also delete the redial as well. Okay, that one's emptied out. Paul had a bigger phone book. He must have been more popular. Although it looks like uh, Connie's phone has a lot more wear on it. A lot more wear. Jeez. Yeah, both of these have definitely seen some action over the years. This one in particular. But they're both still in what looks like good working order, so... Alright, let's go ahead and begin by calling these phones. to listen to that again. I'm going to turn the call screening off so that I can put the other thing on. Okay. That's really cool. I think I'm going to keep that on there. One of the disappointments of this set is that the base does not have the talking caller ID and the handset ringer volume is just kind of low.
I don't think this one has the text to speech on. I wonder if this has a contrast. Here we go. It seems kind of faint to me. There we go. Level 6 looks good to me. Let's fix that on this one too. Security code was changed. That's kind of unusual. The ringer was changed on that one as well. Let's see what kind of rings we have on the base. That's pretty loud. It's too bad the handset ringer isn't anywhere near as loud. like that outgoing message. That's clever. Oh, you can't get to the phone book. Oh, well. I was going to have the telephone talk to itself, but I can't get to the phone book. This is the sound quality test of this Uniden loud and clear telephone with musical digital answering system. Unit in loud and 
Let's pull your telephone with musical that you can't answering system. End of messages. The recording quality is pretty deplorable, but that's not really of any surprise. Three. This is the slow feature. I was going to have the telephone talk to itself, but I can't get to the phone book. This is the sound quality test of this unit in loud and clear telephone with musical digital answering system. I like that slow feature. People talk too stinking fast. End of messages. Okay, so the answering machine is pretty deplorable as far as the quality goes. That's not really any surprise. A lot of these Digitan machines were. Let's go to the outside line. Let's make some calls here. Where was the... There we go. Where's the phone number? Whoops. in the cellar after the heavy rain. They're not listed in the new phone book. A large size in stockings is hard to sell. The juice of lemons makes fine punch. Very clear. Not so loud, though. A yacht flit around the point into the bay. The place seems dull and deserve jail. The frosty air passed through the coat. The crooked maze failed to fool the mouse. He wrote the last novel there at the inn. A saw is a tool used for making boards. The wagon moved on well-oiled wheels. Try to have the court decide the case. They are pushed back each time they attack. The box was thrown beside the park. That sounds very clear to me. We'll put the boost on. The two met while playing on the sand. The ink stain dried on the finished page. The ripe taste of cheese improves with age. Act on these orders with great speed. Adding fast leads to wrong sums. The show was a flop from the very start. There's like no distortion on there at all. I'm very surprised. So that was the natural tone. This is the high tone. They float on the raft to sun their white backs. These days, a chicken leg is a rare dish. Rice is often served in round bowls. The desk was firm on the shaky floor. It takes heat to bring out the odor. The walled town was seized without a fight. The lease ran out in 16 weeks. The purple tie was 10 years old. Men think and plan and sometimes act. A saw is a tool used for making boards. The wagon... Still very clear. Let's go to low tone. Part of the week. 
Cars and buses stalled in snowdrifts. The set of China hit the floor with a crash. The map had a X that meant nothing. Whitings are small fish caught in nets. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. Beef is scarcer than some lamb. Raise the sail and steer the ship northward. A tame squirrel makes a nice pet. The horn of the car woke the sleeping cob. They sliced the... Still no distortion at all. That's really clear. I am impressed with that. Okay, so the... the whoops. What happened? User error. The clarity of the calls on there is exceptional. Um, really, really surprised there was no distortion. Even at full volume, it was still perfectly clear. That's only applicable on the earpiece mode. The winery will be open on Friday through Sunday from 12 until 5.30. And we look for... Whoops. Yeah, these are kind of confusing to me. Today is Sunday, March 27. People's United Bank time, 8.42. Current temperature, 36 degrees. Partly to mostly cloudy slight. This one is pretty clear, too. Just did it again. There's too many buttons on here. Okay. Now I will call the testing answering machine and I'll record some testing messages. Two new messages and six old messages. Message one. This is testing message number one on the Uniden loud and clear telephone. Going to traverse out of the studio now and roam across the room to make sure that the audio is clear and the reception is good. The these phones, I have mixed feelings about them because the ergonomics are really quite good. I'm all the way across the room now, so if it's still clear, then everything's working correctly. The ergonomics are really exceptional on this telephone. The earpiece has a comparable feeling to, to like a 2500 set earpiece. And the ergonomics of the back of the handset are also very good. The clarity of the audio, the quality and clarity are pretty much unsurpassed. It's like corded phone sound quality. However, where these phones kind of lack is in the ringer volume on the handset. The ringer volume on the bass is fantastic. But the ringer volume on the handset, I think, is pretty much comparable to the 1580 the 1580 handsets, and I think the speakerphone is also pretty much comparable to the volume of the 1580 handsets, and that's definitely disappointing. I also think the button layout on the handsets is a bit confusing. There's too many buttons, and I also don't like having to navigate through the menus using the volume buttons on the side. I like the volume buttons on the side very much because it allows you to adjust the call volume without missing any part of the call from removing the handset from your ear. However, it should be just for volume adjustment and not for the menus as well. Message two. Okay, this is the second handset. This is, uh, I think it was Paul's handset. This is on talk. 
Now it's on speaker, speaking at about the same volume and distance as I was before. Now I'll go ahead and put the telephone down on the table. Okay, the telephone is now, whoops, that just the telephone fell over. The telephone is now on the table, and at this point I am speaking about a foot over the telephone directly into it. I'm going to start moving away from the telephone now. This is about two feet away from the telephone, three feet away from the telephone. I'm just noticing that the speakerphone button has the glowing indicator behind it for when it's on. That's kind of cool. It's about four to five feet away from the handset. And this is realistically about as far as I would expect it to work. If it works good here, then that's satisfactory to me. Anything beyond it, well, that's great too. Six feet, seven feet, eight feet, nine feet, ten feet, and this is 11 feet away from the phone, which is all the way across the room. And the answer machine is not cut off yet, so it must have been picking up at least to some degree. Okay, this time I'm going to hang up with the button. End of messages. One. New message and eight old messages. Message one. I just realized that I didn't hang up into the base. I hung up with the buttons both time. So this time I'll hang out into the base. End of messages. All right, so the pickup was really quite good. The speakerphone had a lot of background noise, but that's accurate to the room. This is a very noisy room pickup was really good. I could still hear it even from all the way across the room. So, it looks like everything is working just fine here. It's going to need a good cleaning. And it won't look the greatest even after the, uh, the cleaning just because there's so much wear. But it is working and it's a pretty nice set to talk on. 